Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. And this is my pulmonary camp in uh, pulmonary lecture number four, breathing terms. And I can be found on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and nursingcamp.com where you can get these sticky notes that I'm going over here. Um, all right, so let's get into it. In my previous lecture, I talked about um, breathing. And I talked about listening to breath sounds. And breath sounds are very important because of it's all in the location of the breath sounds. We talked about how in the upper airway it's strider, then it goes to wheezes, and then it goes into ronchi and um, crackles and to diminished and then to absent. And please see my cardiac lecture uh, number three on that pulmonary lecture, I mean, number three. And when I talk about each of these conditions, and these are all attributed to underlying cause. And then we also talked about how um, respiratory rate is very important in the other lecture, where we said that normal respirations are anywhere from 16 to 24. Now, that's kind of all over the place when you're studying, but generally what happens is, is in the NCLEX and you're looking at terms, um, what they're really talking about is they're never going to give you something on the edge of it. So they're not going to give you like, where it says 16 to 24, they're not going to give you like, uh, respirations are 15 okay it's too close to there so um, they really go to either like 12 or 10 and what we said in our previous lecture 8 is intubate so that's a cue no, we're talking about respirations here so whenever you're looking at numbers and respirations the numbers are important um, but more important is that why are they there in the NCLEX question and that's what we want to be looking at so now we're going to talk about the breathing terms. Now, sometimes you don't have the actual numbers. And, and the symptomo symptom symptomology will be um, these terms. And that's what we're going to cover. So it's basically just the numbers. And it's just another, it's kind of like when we say a patient is tachycardic. What we're really saying is you need to know what tachycardia means that it's heart rate greater than 100. And that's most patients wish. Those are reasons why a patient will be have a high heart rate. And that's a mnemonic we follow. Please see that lecture. And that's a cardiac lecture. I also have another one that's called bradycardia. Now bradycardia is also, it's called black 3D glass. And that's another mnemonic where I talk about all the reasons why the patient's bradycardia. But the understanding is that bradycardia is less than 60. All right, and that's the premise of breathing terms. And so when we're looking at this, that's what we're talking about. All right, so tachypnea is the first one. So tachypnea is basically um, increased rate and uh, of respirations. They're regular, they're shallow, and um, it's basically an increase greater than um, 24 breaths per minute. It's common in fever and also anxiety, and we see it in exercise. So we always look at the underlying cause of this, tachypnea. The next one is uh, bradypenia. Bradypenia is the, a respiratory rate that is regular, but it's slow. And it's usually less than well, and we said that, that the body generally, if it's relaxed, it's going to be about 14, 15. But 12, we start to worry. Less than 12, we really start to worry because of um, at 10, you know, they start to become acute. And like we said before, 8 is intubate. Um, so you should be bag valve mask in that patient. You should be w staying with that patient and continually assessing. They should be in the high fowlers, and they should be uh, vital signs. Pulse ox, and um, what, what's their level of consciousness? Okay, the next one is um, hyperventilation. Now, hyperventilation is an increased rate in depth. Um, the problem with it is that it blows off CO2. And when you hyperventilate, um, and you're blowing off CO2, you can't quite catch your breath. And so a lot of times what we'll do is we're going to give that person a paper bag to breathe into because we want them to uh, 
to um, breathe back in their, oh, that's some breathing, it's terrible. We want them to breathe this CO2 back in because they've been exhaled. They've exhaled all their CO2. And what happens is they need that CO2 back in their lungs to keep the acid back in. And that's called hyperventilation. That's another uh, lecture which I talk a little bit more about you know, nursing interventions based on uh, treatments. The next thing is um, uh, apneustic. Right. Apneustic is, uh, is generally neuro. It's neuro-related in the sense that it depends on, look at the patient. Um, but there's also a thing called apneic. Apneic means uh, no breathing. So periods of you have a respiration, no breathing. Patients who are apneic will increase their CO2. Where hyperventilation will decrease CO2, they're going to start to blow it off. But when you start to increase your CO2, CO2 is acidic and it makes you sleepy. And it makes you really sleepy. So people who are apneic uh, might be a person who is, uh, has sleep apnea. Please see my lecture on sleep apnea, where I talk a little bit more about this retention of the CO2. So they wake up and they're very tired. And as they start to walk throughout the day, they start to breathe out the CO2. And what happens is they start to feel better throughout the day. And so what happens is, is that they, start, they have a very uh, tired feeling and um, they put on a CPAP machine and then what happens is, is that corrects this apneic period. But also if the patient is apneistic, that generally could be a neuro patient. Also, which brings us up to Shane Stokes. That's a period of respiration and periods of apnea. And we see this a lot with um, uh, end of life patients. So that's definitely acute. And the last one is uh, what we call um, Kussmaul respirations. And Kussmaul respirations are deep, labored, and blowing off CO2. So they're really metabolic and um, they just have these deep respirations. And so they need to assess the underlying cause. That's a normal finding with a patient with DKA. Um, what else? Well, that, about, that does about, uh, there is a couple of other things, but the main thing is, is that whenever you're seeing these terminologies, um, it's generally, this is the most likely. And what they're really talking about is these numbers right here. So not just memorizations of the numbers we need to know. We also sometimes need to know terms because terms are the patient is tachypnic. Well, you need to say that, well, they shouldn't be tachypnic. There's an underlying cause of why they are. And that patient should be high followers. You should get vital signs. You might think oxygen. You look at the underlying cause. Why are they having this experience? And once you understand that, Remember, you always assess before you implement. So you never ever just um, give them Lasix. You know, you never just give them medication. You always look at the patient first. And are they in distress? Because if they are in distress, then it's definitely high followers and, you know, notify the healthcare provider. Well, that's about it for me. This is a general overview of the breathing terms. Um, my name is Nursing Camp, and this is NursingCamp.com, and this is Pulmonary Camp in the Pulmonary Lecture Series. Uh, we'll see you next time.